going on, y'all? Welcome back to another edition of Gen Sports Corner back at you for December 13th, 2022. Before I get into the video, like, subscribe, click the notification bell so you know every time I drop a video. Without further ado, we're going to get into one of the fights over the weekend, Teofimo Lopez and Sandor <clears throat> Martin. And this was an interesting one here. Everybody had a lot to say about this from Devin Haney to Tank Davis to Brian Garcia to Timothy Bradley. Shout out for uh, your induction to the Hall of Fame, by the way. A lot of people had a lot to say about this fight. And this was, th this was crazy, okay? So the picture you see right here on the screen, this was a microcosm of what happened throughout the entire fight. Teofimo trying to come forward with a jab and then a straight right to the body and or when he could land it to the head. And then Sandor Martin taking a step back and trying to clip Teofimo with the check right hook that was the fight in a nutshell and when he missed he would back up and run which he was doing all night El Matador that was what he was about the entire night it was highly annoying and then one time in the second round he actually clipped Teo coming in and put him to the canvas didn't really hurt him didn't shake him up or anything but he got his knockdown so overall this was a very highly disputed fight some people say that Teo won it pretty cool uh some people say that he got you know martin got robbed or whatever me personally my scorecard I, let's go to these scorecards right now so on the fight uh pasquale procopio had it 97 to 92 for lopez he scored eight rounds to two for teo and uh california max de luca scored at 96 to 93 for teo but italy's guido cavalieri scored it 95 to 94 for martin and so he went it on you know majority decision but or excuse me split decision but still look i i, I looked at the fight i had it scored seven rounds to three for Teofimo Lopez and that would be changed upgraded to seven rounds to four because of the knockdown in round two but outside of round two and then there were two other rounds that I thought Martin won I, I don't really see what he really did in the fight he would land a punch here and there but for the most part he was on his horse but he wasn't active he wasn't trying to throw when Teo would come in throw the one two he got the way and then he wouldn't try to crack back no he just circle around and, and and run around that's not boxing i i don't respect that as somebody who's a martial artist i don't respect that as somebody who's judging a fight i'm looking at the uh, aggressor was Teo effective at all times no but there was more than his fair share of times where he landed the straight right to the body did some good body work and i thought overall he was more active and landed more punches even though he was missing punches right you're whiffing on punches but you're still landing a fair amount of punches so i just don't see where martin sandor did enough to even tie in the fight like i said he had his spots but look we're not giving participation prizes that's just me okay so that's the way i had the the fight score so looking here at compu box uh, unofficially tail got landed uh, credited for landing 20 more punches overall 97 uh to sandor's 77 and, and according and then um looking at the fight even the punches that sandor was landing he, he wasn't effective he wasn't shaking him up the ones that tail were landing were doing have more of effect than sandor okay that being said that being said after the fight, there was a little back and forth with Sandor Martin and Teo. Sandor was like, you know, you didn't win the fight. I won the fight. And, you know, they're going back and forth. Teo was like, you were running all night, which was true. However, what I noticed, Teofimo Lopez did not look like he had the power at 140 like he had at uh, 135. Oh, also here, Sandor Martin said, I clearly won the fight because the ref didn't count a knockdown. Now, that knockdown in round 7 of 10... Teo was coming in to try and land a punch, and Sandor Martin threw a, I believe it was a right hook, and to me, he, he hit on the back of the head and hooked around the back of the head, so to me, I did not count that as a knockdown, as a legal knockdown, okay? First knockdown, that was clean, boom, right off, right off the top of the dome, 
check right hook beautiful that second one i didn't think that was a legal shot so i did not count that as a knockdown even though i thought that sandor martin won the round so i gave it a 10-9 round instead of a 10-8 round all right but one thing that was interesting like i said i don't think that tail has the power at 140 and that's something that sandor martin mentioned as well he said look he said no he don't have the power during an interview with boxingscene.com he don't have the power for 140 and martin he don't really punch that hard and he still was able to knock tail down in that second round with the check right hook so you tail's talking about he wants to go and fight uh roger progress 28 and 1 24 ko's look look at the ko rate wbc light welterweight champion at 140 28 and 1 24 ko's well progress is going to blow him out the water and that's something that um in an interview recently with i don't know if it's fighthight.com timothy bradley again shout out for making a hall of fame they were asking him about that fight and he said before the fight there was something in his conversation with Teo where he was like this isn't the same guy this is not the same Teofimo Lopez that we saw that beat whether you want to say he was injured or not Vasily Lomachenko the same guy that was bombing people out the ring at 135 this is not the same fighter all right he's only 25 years old which is crazy like the trajectory that his career has taken is just it's wild like the peaks and the valleys right so he, he said, yo, I talked to this brother and I, I didn't, there were things about him where I'm like, there's something that he's lacking right now that he, he had before. And after the fight, when asked about what do you think about Progress and, and Lopez, he like, yo, you're not ready for him. I'm paraphrasing, but he said, you're not ready for Progress. And I agree, Progress would not tell you out. I, I've seen clear regression in Teofimo Lopez since that George Campos Jr., loss clear regression all right now you look at who who the champions are at their respective weight classes and you see that light heavy light lightweight Devin haney undisputed champion all the belts 140 you have progress as the wbc champion and then josh taylor has the wbo in the ring alberto preo has the wba and then ibf is vacant he don't need no parts of progress Josh Taylor, again, he's another guy I don't think that Taylor is going to beat. All right? Poyo, I don't know much about, but Progress and Taylor, they get you up out of there, in my opinion. So, and then if you go down to lightweight, you're not beating Devin Haney. And if Devin Haney, for whatever reason, decides to come up to 140, which you can always do, again, you're not ready for an even heavier Devin, Devin Haney, who has better boxing skills and better defense, you're in a world of trouble. So I don't know where he goes from here. All right, you look at this resume. Nakatani, great win, Uni uh, unanimous decision. Uh, Nakatani, very, very tough fighter at 135. Then Richard Kami, again, another very tough fighter, knocked him out in two rounds. That was a big win for him to get that IBF title from Richard Kami in 2019. And then he goes and faces Vasily Lomachenko next and beats him for WBA and I believe, what was it, WBO? Yeah, and the ring, lightweight championships. He's sitting on cloud nine. He's in heaven right now. All right. And then you go face George Cambosis a year later. Now, mind you, Teo had like a lot of seated 19 uh, complications that year going into that fight. Right. Because we didn't know about seated 19 in December 14th of 2019. It, it was we China knew about it, but we, we hadn't even heard of it. So it was unforeseen. Right. So you face Lomachenko in 2020, and then 2021, you have those complications with CV19, and then you finally get the venue set, and you face George Kambosis, and he knocks you down in the first or second round. You come back and knock him down in the 10th round, but beyond that, he out, you got outboxed for the majority of that fight, and you lost on two of the judges' scorecards by a considerable margin, like 115 to 111, and then 115 to like 112 or 115 to 113. It was, it was clear that Kambosis won that fight. And since that fight, he hasn't been the same guy. This, here's an article from Devin Haney, and his is a, this is a perfect picture of what the fight looked like between Cambosis and, and Lopez. And he said, Cambosis ruined, ruined Teo, and he'll never be the same again. And when asked about this, Timothy Bradley said, yo, there might be something to that. 
right? So everybody sees it. Even some of these other boxers also echo. Now, whether they thought Teo won or lost, I, I didn't. I didn't read that far into what their their takes were on it. But something that they all seem to say as a consensus is that he didn't show me a whole lot. He did not show me a whole lot. And I think in all their heads, including Haney, which he's put on record, he hasn't been the same guy since losing to Cain Jr. All right. So I, I just, I don't know where he's headed. Let me got, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What what do you think is next for Teo? Do you, he asked in the corner to his corner guys. He said, do I still got If that isn't you everything. I not say. I don't know. Uh, Siri. Uh, don't worry about it, okay? <laughs> Even Siri's asking, like, I don't know what to say. All right? Even Siri doesn't know. Let me know what you guys think about that. So, you know, taking that and segueing over to Haney. We, now reading this article on Boxing Scene, I, I, I wonder if there's some posturing going on in terms of getting this fight done with Lomachenko. Because you have Ramadan coming up next year around the, the time where Haney wants to fight he wants to fight before it right so you have Ramadan taking place from March 22nd to April 21st shout out to all my my Muslims but he's trying to fight before that so he really wants to get a fight I think in early March so you can go into that because mind you, you during Ramadan you have to fast for a month so not it's not just Oh, he can come in after April 21st and then fight in May. No, you need time to recover, right? So it seems like top rank is pushing for a May fight, but I don't think he's going to be able to have proper training after Ramadan. We don't know that. So, and he has weight struggles at, at 135 and he's considered moving up to 140. So look, he's going to fast for a month. You know, he's going to be just shoveling food down his mouth once Ramadan's over. So, you know, it's going to be a little bit problematic to make 135 after that fast and you know I, I don't blame him so i don't know i don't want to see this fight i don't i don't know why it's a problem to have the fight in march right it's december now you're, you've already made the fight made it known you're going to have the fight you have december one month january february Mar you have four months from now why is march an issue um, do they not have the purse bid? Do they not have the venue? I don't know what the issue is, is here. Top rank de declined to, to comment here. So I, I don't I don't see where this would be Devin Haney's issue. Um, just make the fight. I mean, Devin Haney, come on now. You're talking about a guy who traveled to Australia two times to fight George Cambosis Jr. The first time where he got the belts and the second time, really... I mean, as the undisputed champion, why should he have to go on the road again? But he did so. And even with all the issues trying to, trying to get his dad in the country, still went down there and whooped that ass. So why is it such a big deal to have the venue set, the money in order, and be able to fight in March? I don't see that it's his side holding it up. So kind of odd to me because I, I want to see that fight. That's a great matchup. That's one of the best matchups we can have, not just in that division, but in boxing. We can settle once and for all who's the best out of the two, Loma or Devin, or, or the up and coming lion, Devin Haney, who is the current undisputed champion. So that's what it is. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, I'm also going to be talking about the Terrence Crawford fight that happened over the weekend. I, have, I want to share my thoughts on that because we want to know when the hell him and, and Spencer are going to fight, if ever. But, you know, that's neither here, here nor there. Uh, leave a like, uh, drop a comment, and I'll catch you on the next video. Deuces.